Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Ace of Spades. This used to be a free game, but was bought out by a company called Jagex, I believe is the way you pronounce it. I could be absolutely wrong. They're the guys who made RuneScape. Is it Jagex, Jagex? I don't even know. It's spelled J-A-G-E-X. Simple as that. British company, actually. And they bought out Ace of Spades and turned it into this. What was Ace of Spades initially? Well, it came out as a, a voxel-based sandbox shooter. It was a little odd, really. The whole world was kind of blocky, you know, voxel-based, as you might imagine. It involved a lot of digging, it involved a lot of building of trenches, and you could also build bunkers. You could build a lot of stuff. Minecraft-esque, one would certainly say. Ace of Spades came out quite some time ago, and by came out, I mean it was re released in its very rough initial state. It must have been years ago. One way or the other, Jagex, Jagex, whatever you want to call it, bought it out and turned it into this, which is a shooter available on Steam for $10 or your regional equivalent. So let's take a look at it, shall we? I've played a few matches and I'm getting to the point where I can give you my first impressions on this title, so let me show it to you. So if we go to the server list, what we're going to see, bunch of servers. We'll go to US East to try and get the best pings if possible. And there's a few different modes. We've got Capture the Flag, Demolition, Diamond Mine, which is fairly interesting. That's kind of like a Capture the Flag, only you have to dig to find the flag. Multi-Hill, Multiple King of the Hill, Team Deathmatch, and Zombie Mode, which is dreadful. <laughs> I tried Zombie Mode, and it was one of the most dumb and dull and boring things I could possibly imagine. And let's start with Capture the Flag. It makes kind of the most sense for the trench warfare style of things. At least that would be if the game actually had any of it. So let's see if we can get in. All right, let's give it a shot, shall we? I'm gonna join blue team. All right, so there's four classes available. The commando, he's got either the minigun or the RPG as primary, a pistol as his secondary weapon. Snowblower underscore tool underscore description. Yeah, this game is clearly finished. Don't know what the hell's going on with that. Marksman, he's a sniper, as you might imagine. The rocketeer. SMG, and he has a jetpack, which is actually more problematic than you might think. And then the miner as well, that has a drill cannon as well as the ability to dig quite a lot, and has a shotgun and some dynamite, so pretty good class if you want to go digging. Let's start with the Rocketeer, and then we'll try some of the other classes, because the Rocketeer kind of demonstrates a, a fairly large problem with this game, in that there really isn't a huge amount of reason to actually construct any real defenses, and the reason for that is that you have a character that can do this. What the hell's the point in building a trench or a wall or anything like that when you can just jetpack over the bloody thing? It's unbelievably ridiculous. I can't imagine why someone thought that was a good idea, but evidently they did. Alright. Let's hop, skip, and a jump over in this direction, so... A sneaky sneaky, I'm going to try and get to their flag. Now, as you might imagine, the Rocketeer is one of the best ways to possibly do this, usually because you can get up to the top of a tree, assuming that you don't slip off of it, and then recharge your jetpack, which doesn't take too long, and then make a big jump all the way across, and we might be able to make it. You'll see that they kind of try to construct some defenses here, but, well, there's no real reason to, because a jetpack takes you directly over them. Now, it would make sense if the game didn't involve the ability to, you know, have a jetpack, but since it does, then what ends up happening is that any attempts to build any real defenses whatsoever are rendered absolutely useless. It's a bit stupid, really. Now, you do have the ability to dig, which is a little bit more interesting because it essentially allows you to dig a tunnel. Let's follow this one. Someone's been digging here, obviously. And we can head on down and find... Uh, well, it actually doesn't go anywhere. But if I were a miner, which I may very well be, actually, I might change my class and go to the miner and have a little bit of a dig around, which kills me. And you can kind of dig under the level and basically create new access routes, which is interesting. You know, that's a kind of a cool idea. But again, one has to wonder why would you bother with this when you have the ability to get a jetpack and rocket over the target and move faster than anyone else in the game by a country mile. It's a difficult concept to grasp, I feel. 
There is the Adrenal Cannon, as you can see. It's doing a reasonably good job of creating me a tunnel. And has also managed to get me under here. The digging animation is embarrassingly bad. I, the, the whole aspect of the game being sort of voxel-based made sense with the initial variant. I think that's an enemy up there. Let's see if I can... Oh, no, actually, it might be friendly. It, it made a reasonable degree of sense. I mean, it, it still does, mostly because if it's a game about digging and construction, then you're going to be tapping into the, the whole notion of the game being made of blocks. Now, let's be honest here. There is quite clearly an attempt to appeal to the... Minecraft demographic here, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's an entirely valid way of marketing your game. Sit down, thank you very much. I'm gonna get my drill cannon ready. You can also drill upwards, which is kind of neat. Drill cannon is possibly one of the most interesting things I've seen in a game for quite some time, mostly because the ability to create a tunnel out of thin air without having to dig like an idiot is kind of cool. Not that this is actually serving any practical purpose, because it's taking me forever to dig up to the enemy area, and then they can just build over it anyway, so I don't really see the point. It's weird how the level has to actually rebuild itself every time. Now, I'd say one of the game's strengths is the aspect of destructibility. Now, just shooting at a block makes it disappear. The main problem being, of course, is that it doesn't really serve any practical purpose. I, I like the idea that the actual level gets completely wrecked as you fight over it, assuming that it did. The thing is that there's not actually a lot of classes that seem to have a huge deal, a huge amount of explosives. So, in general, the level seems to stay mostly intact. I mean, this is a good few minutes into the game, and you know, things look to be pretty much the same as ever, with a little bit of damage done every now and again, and... It doesn't really serve a purpose. It's it's mostly cosmetic. And I think the idea of having a sandbox shooter is that there is a point in building stuff. Now, you can build stuff. I can show you how. I mean, if I were to get this block out here, you could say, I'm going to start building something. Why? Why would I build something? I mean, this is just... It's clumsy, for one thing. It takes forever. I mean, the fact that I can't say just build very, very rapidly is kind of a pain in the ass. And even if I were to build this, you know, what would be the point exactly? What am I trying to do? I mean, these matches are only like 15 minutes long. It's not like you can really build much anyway. And then someone's just going to come along and blow it up. So I, I think it seems to me like almost the game mode is designed wrong. Like if you wanted, wanted to do something like this, you'd have kind of a, a very sort of flat and maybe faceless level. And then you'd give everyone five minutes to build defenses cooperatively. And then you would go and fight. But that's not what they do. They just start you off and say, hey, go do this. You know, go play capture the flag. And as a result, the building elements don't seem to serve any pra practical purpose at all. And even when basic defenses are constructed, it ends up in a situation where you just go rocketeer and then it ceases to be a problem anymore. Now, what have we got over there? So they actually have set up a few defenses. I'm going to try and dig directly underneath them. You know, and this is where the game gets interesting. You know, there are every now and again moments that you can actually do something pretty nifty, like dig underneath, create different tunnels and things like that, and actually try to gain access to the enemy's intelligence briefcase and circumvent the defenses. That's assuming they even build any. Now, I've got to be honest, like, this is the first game that I've played out of quite a few matches that has actually had any defenses of any description. And it's a really, really odd thing, isn't it? Because you would think that would kind of be the priority. And yet, it doesn't seem to be anything of the sort. No one really bothers. I think it's mostly because the matches finish so quickly and because the building interface is so bloody clumsy that there really is honestly no reason to spend your time doing that. It makes more sense to grab a class that can kill people, I, the guy with the minigun or the guy with the sniper rifle or the guy with the jetpack and just run around killing people. This game type would make sense if they did it properly. As I said, it seems like you need like a five to ten minute building period at the start. And there are there are games that already do that. I mean, there's a mod for Minecraft that I know, seriously, because I happened to watch that on the Yogg's cast. I believe there was a mod called The Walls, I think, whereby each team kind of gets about ten minutes to build stuff, and then the walls come down and you have to deal with the team appropriately. Now, you know, that's an interesting concept that I feel would work extremely well here. In fact, I think the entire game 
itself would kind of have to be based on that game mode in order for it to actually be fun. As it stands, what it is is a really bad first-person shooter. And I haven't really talked about the FPS mechanics yet. It's, it's kind of a joke that you can go into aim down sights and things like that, but uh, it, I suppose it's kind of cute in a way, but the actual shooting is thoroughly unenjoyable. It, it really is. It, it doesn't look good. I think you can probably tell that to start with, and I can't imagine why anyone would expect it to be any good. And it's not. I, you know, it really, really isn't. It's just, it's flat out awful. It's, it doesn't feel good in any way. The recoil is just bizarre. I, you see how the recoil works? It just kind of kicks you up a set amount of pixels. There's no smoothness to it whatsoever. Not to mention, you know, animation quality is absolutely terrible in pretty much across the board for everything in this game. I mean, it really is. And I can kind of understand some of it because, hey, it's the theme. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of what we're, we're trying to achieve here. It's our artistic vision. But that, I don't care about your artistic vision. I, I really, really don't. I could not give a toss about your artistic vision. I hope this blows up and actually kills somebody, but no. That's actually a very disappointing little explosion there. I don't care about your artistic vision. I care about a good aesthetic and animations that properly reflect the game. Which is not what I'm getting here at all. I mean, what I get here is just something that looks cheap, it feels cheap. And it's kind of the same thing I would say about Minecraft. You would hardly call that a game with exceptional fidelity. Now, to its credit, some of these maps actually look pretty good. I mean, the voxel style does have a certain degree of charm to it, and it has always been the most obvious when looking at landscapes. When you see something really impressive that was built in Minecraft, you don't look at the creatures on the ground or the players, because they look terrible. They look really, really bad. What you do is you look at the structures and you look at the overall setup of the land, preferably from a distance. And it actually has this, this cute charm to it. It's actually beautiful in certain aspects. And I think the, you know, the map design actually does reflect that. So it's all, almost kind of a, a shame to blow it up, really. That might be the worst username I've ever seen from anyone ever. Oh, hello. This could be a problem. Well, maybe not. It's hard to say because, as I said, the shooting is actually so awful. It's really hard for me to tell whether or not I'm hitting him with anything. I mean, look at it. It's actually a pretty good-looking game for the most part. At least until you ever see anything else operating within it, if it was just a landscape simulator. And it seems like a game that's kind of full of potential, but... The thing is that... Here's what you've got to understand. The original game was full of potential. And then it got bought out by Jagex or Jagex or whatever for... I don't even care anymore. For whatever reason. And it got turned into this, which is essentially a deathmatch shooter. With four different classes and, hey, jetpacks, you know. Someone described it as TF2 in blocks, and uh, they're almost correct. Now, I played another blocky shooter. It went by the name of Brick Force, and the funny thing about that is, like, the actual shooting in that game is surprisingly satisfying. Like, it's genuinely good, and they didn't go out of their way to make everything look ridiculous. Have blocky guns, blocky aim down sights, blocky bloody everything. And as a result, have astonishingly terrible animations. I mean, god damn, look at that. Uh, you should watch him dig. It's actually hilarious. I, it just looks like that. It really, really does. Like, hmm, digging blocks. That's a peddling. No, that's terrible. <laughs> and it seems like it, it, this version of the game just flat out doesn't get what Ace of Spades was supposed to be about initially. And now, I've got to attest that I have not had a lot of time with the original Ace of Spades. I played a little bit of it, and what I essentially found there was trench warfare. Lots and lots of trench warfare. And that was cool, because people actually built stuff up, and I guess because the game didn't really have any sort of official rules or anything like that, it was very much community-driven. You didn't have to rely on a bunch of silliness. You didn't have to rely on the game mechanics itself. You could rely on the community to do some cool stuff. But in this version, you can't. Now, it's very hard for me to blame the dev for that. 
Now, you can blame the dev for other things. No real question about that. If you want to consider things to blame the dev for, well, the fact that the game is buggy and in some aspects unfinished, like missing tooltips and things like that. Huge numbers of people complained on the forums about incompatibility with 64-bit systems, although I must admit I haven't run into anything like that. Server disconnections, really bad performance, the inability to even start the game on a regular basis. This is the kind of stuff that a lot of people complain about on the Steam forums, so it would appear that the game is kind of unfinished. And looking at the Steam update page, I don't see a single patch for the game ever. Now, that's a concern. Yeah, that's that's a genuine concern. That's something that we should be looking at and saying, huh, this is a yet another unfinished game on Steam. What the hell happened to Valve's quality control? When the answer is that they don't actually have any, at least in terms of the actual Steam store. They will sell whatever they can sell. And, you know, that's, that's kind of reasonable, but they still need to take responsibility for games that don't work that are on their store, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm not going to get into a Valve rant here. But, you know, the game is clearly unfinished in certain respects, so it would automatically make it pretty hard for me to recommend it. In the case of what I'm seeing right now, there's very little about this game which appeals to me in its current state. It could, potentially, be a really, really good game, but I think, honestly, it would actually come down to the community making it so, or certain game modes coming along that really encouraged the building of defenses and a bunch of trench warfare. You can't do trench warfare on a map like this. I mean, the map's sodding huge. It's nice, don't get me wrong. I mean, it looks like it's well-designed. It would be well-designed for a deathmatch game, not for something which you would think involves building trenches and patience and all that kind of stuff. This doesn't seem like the kind of thing that rewards any of those things at all. So it very much surprises me that the map is in its current state. And that they thought this would be a good idea. This would be the kind of thing that would make sense in a game about building and digging and, you know, a game called Ace of Spades in the first place. Why won't he die? There we go. It's, it's just super confusing. It seemed like what happened was they took the game and thought, oh, this is cool. This looks really cool. I'm, we're going to buy it and we're going to develop it and we're going to release it as a commercial title. But somewhere the game was lost in translation. That seems to be the most logical thing. The game was lost in translation. They couldn't actually figure out what it was for, what it was supposed to do. And they thought, well, if we just shore up the graphics a little bit and increase the production value and add a bunch of maps and classes, that'll work, right? But it doesn't. I mean, it, feel, it just feels like the entire game flat out does not work and doesn't actually achieve what they're looking for. And I don't even know what it is that they're looking for. I don't even think that they know what they're looking for with this title. It seems like they got these mechanics, and they thought, like, hey, this is cool, we can put them all into a video game. Now everyone figure out what to do with them. And the response is, well, I can't figure out what to do with them, because your maps and your class system and just the way that your game flows doesn't seem to gel with these mechanics. It seems like you want a much more slower-paced game, and that seemed to be what the original Ace of Spades was all about. I went and watched a good number of videos on it. It's like, huh, there's a bunch of trenches here and people are advancing as squads very, very slowly and things like that. And then here you have a jetpack. It's like, what? That, that doesn't seem to make any sense at all. It's weird. This is really weird. I mean, I barely see anyone digging or building anything. And it's like, hey, let's build a bunker. It's like, it's fiddly and the game's already started. There's no time for that. There really isn't. I mean, they're already coming at us. What the hell am I supposed to do? They're already just charging directly at us. They don't care about building anything. And I'm just, you know, it's a shame, really. It's actually a lot of lost potential, and it's, I suppose that's what happens when you buy a game that kind of looks neat, but have no real understanding of what it involves. You didn't make the game. You didn't really understand what your end goal was with it, so you release your version, and it's like, well, so what did you aim to, aim to achieve here? And you don't have an answer because you just flat out don't know. That's that's a shame. That's a lot of lost potential. And there's there are some elements of this game that stand out as being really awesome, like, again, the map design, but they would be awesome in a different game that wasn't this one. You know, I feel like I'm repeating myself here. That's probably because I am, but I want to just drive that point home for a second. I, it's, it just, it's not really mechanically sound. And even if it were, it's 
way, way drier than it should be. This is the kind of game that should be wacky, crazy fun. And it isn't. And the, the diamond mining mode it essentially involves a lot of pot luck. So it's like, hey, dig, 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 dig until you find some diamonds. Then bring them. I, but I don't want to do that. That's that's not actually all that interesting. And honestly, it seems like the placement of the diamonds is kind of random. So it's not like you can start building an amazing cave network and have battles underground and stuff like that. It's There's no real indicator of where the diamonds are, how to find them. And when it comes to other game types, the, the most you'll probably get out of this cave digging thing is to tunnel to your other guy's capture point. Assuming you can pull that off until, of course, someone just fills the tunnel in, but... Uh, I don't know. It's... It's not worth recommending in its current state. It seems like it... It has a bunch of potential, but they've done nothing with it. They released this game weeks ago. Actually, was it like... Oh, was it a week? A couple of weeks? Yeah, three, three or four weeks ago. There's not been a single patch to deal with the performance issues and crashes and anything that people seem to have, which is very disturbing to say the least. I mean, why would you pay for a version that seems to be worse than the free one? There is currently still a version of the free one available. It's actually been set up, and I'll put a link in the description below this video for you so you can actually check it out yourself. And I'm actually kind of intrigued to try it because I want to know how that would work. Is it any better than this? Because this this isn't fun at all. And it's a shame because I can see what could be with a game like this, assuming that it was developed by the right people with the right mindset. And I am um, I quite frankly do not believe that Yegex, Jegex, whatever the balls their name is, is actually the right company for the job. And I don't think they know where this is going, and as a result, it ends up just being a cobbled mess with no direction. Ace of Spades, ladies and gentlemen, currently available on Steam. That's my first impressions of this title. Not good, unfortunately. My name has been Total Biscuit, and I shall see you next time.